Welcome to VeeamON 2023 here in Miami, and I have the pleasure of having Rick Vanover, who's the Senior Director of Product Strategy. Good memory, yeah. <laughs> um, it's always great to see you. Maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about your role at the company, and then we can go into some of the new things that have come out at the show. Yeah, cheers, Brian. First of all, thanks for the opportunity to be with you and for the viewers as well. Uh, as you said, I'm Rick Vanover on the product strategy team. I'm in my 13th year here at Veeam on the product team that whole time. I have three missions. One, be a bridge into product management for capabilities in the market and what that means for our customers and our partners back to product management. Mission number two, deliver thought leading technical content, you know, blogs, presentations, white papers, webinars and the like. And my third mission is to enable technical communities, right, which is something that Veeam does pretty uniquely. And then, yeah, that all kind of came out here this week at, at Vmon. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the, the hot topic is, you know, 365 and ransomware seems to be the two big things. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the new features and stuff that have come out. Yeah, so really interesting. So one of the side hustles I do, or fancy extra projects I do, is I work on the Vmon event team as a content architect. So when I think about what are we going to bring for breakouts, what are we going to have for uh, experiences at the event, we look at our product portfolio and we, we try to balance it right. I was shocked, Brian, the most popular session for this week in Miami and then number two most popular session for the virtual experience was around the Microsoft 365 backup product. And we do believe we're the largest deployed Microsoft 365 backup solution in the world with over 15 million mailboxes protected. But it was really important to balance the, the platform of products and you know, have that level. We had more data than ever on how to forecast that, get the little things like the room sizes right and you know, the right speakers and the right levels. So that's mm -hmm. something that I put a lot of work on really from January 1 until actually last week I made a good deal. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm off of operations. I'm, I'm over to being the speaker and stuff now. So that was... Uh, Really interesting, and ransomware was number two, our ransomware theme topic here, and uh, number one, actually, on the virtual experience in terms of pre-reg. So cloud, ransomware, Microsoft 365, the platform story is real. I mean, it, it was pretty interesting to see that, you know, it, it's not a matter of um, if you're gonna get attacked by ransomware, it's when, yeah. you know. Um, and, and the fact that a lot of people just are not prepared with, their, with what they have right now to be able to handle that. And I think you know, Veeam is making big strides in uh, protecting that data. Yeah, indeed. I mean, protecting the data is one thing, but uh, we also want to raise awareness to the different levels and the different milestones and timelines. In fact, I'll steal something from the, uh, one of the sessions I did yesterday, Ransomware Recovery Unplugged, and that one will also be available soon at vmon.com on the replay. But what we really did is zoomed in on the timeline of after an incident. So much talk is about preparing for ransomware. So much, you know, the ransomware trends report that debuted this week, we talked about some of the data points and the frequency, and you're right. It is the disaster we're much more likely to deal with today. I, I grew up preparing for fire, flood, and blood. Right. But the reality is cybersecurity incidents by the numbers are the disaster we are all most likely going to have to deal with. And so uh, Brad and I zoomed into that timeline, and, and I'll highlight one takeaway from, from the learning there, is that there are some surprises. And for example, if cybersecurity response teams or law enforcement get involved, it's very possible we have our backup data, but we can't recover there. Right. That's evidence now. Huh. And maybe today is the day we recover to the cloud. And, and those things take time, and those are surprises. So it's one of those things that we want to just raise awareness to that. And we have products that can orchestrate recovery to the cloud, which is also a good way to kind of mitigate that challenge. Uh, but we just want to raise awareness to the different levels. And um, I spend a lot of time talking to the crit critical incidents support team at Veeam, who is where the ransomware cases go. That's the dedicated, specialized team. They're based in central, well, they're based around the world, but there is a team based in central Ohio where, where I go in every day at the Veeam office there. And I, I, I think they're officially sick of talking to me <laughs> because I'm always asking them questions, what's working, what's not working, what do you want the market to know? 
tell me how we got out of the problem. I'm going to listen a lot caref more carefully if I hear something about something didn't go as expected. That's what I really am digging for. Get that information out. Take those worst practices, pivot them over to best practices. Now, um, we heard on the stage about uh, the inline protection that's coming. Yeah, the new Maybe stuff. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, so one of the highlights, what a lot of the audience really likes out of Veeamon is that preview of upcoming capabilities. And so when we look at the Veeam data platform, we, we took an intentional approach this week of three previews yesterday of some upcoming capabilities and then really highlighting three existing capabilities on the truck today. So I'll walk you through that inline detection. So basically, you know, I have this mindset that if ransomware gets into the backups, it's actually too late. Right. We have plenty of things to look at uh, recovering from uh, ransomware and making sure it doesn't reintroduce the threat there. But if it's really in the backups, I get really concerned about that. So the inline detection engine, which is an upcoming capability and the, the upcoming release of the Veeam data platform specifically, Veeam Backup and Replication 12A, that will uh, provide at the source capture, when we do a backup, there will do a fast inline detection. And there will be a small amount of CPU overhead for that, but if I talk to environments today, CPU is not the bottleneck. So right. the juice is worth the squeeze in that regard. It, you know, Allocating some CPU for this additional level of detection will be really cool. Yeah, I think that's pretty exciting that you know, it, you don't have to wait till after the backup has already been done to kind of analyze it. You can analyze it as it's happening so that yeah. you know, it doesn't get in in the first place. Right, or at least, um, you know, another way of saying it is if there's this timeline, again, the ti I keep going back to the timeline, the bang, it's going to happen somehow, some way. The question is, when do you know about it, All right? And if anything we can do to push it backwards in time is good, All right? And there's al already plenty of things before. I mean, Veeam 1 has a really good ransomware detection that includes exfiltration, right? The possible ransomware activity alarm. If you're not using that, check it out, you know, and then the data integration API, the mount, PowerShell, commandlet, and then staged restore, secure restore. These other things are already on the truck. Malware scan on sure backup, the orchestrator. I think I got them all. But again, <laughs> just putting different capabilities in the timeline, that's, that's really what the market wants today. And I guess lastly, um, Singapore or Hong Kong? Oh boy, this is a <laughs> dinner question. So um, the context, we had a, a good team dinner last night and I was sitting next to a couple of different press and analyst groups and two ladies uh, opposite of the table, one was from Hong Kong, one was from Singapore and I love visiting Hong Kong, but Singapore is my favorite place in the world to visit, so <laughs> it's Singapore. Great. I guess lastly, uh, where can people go if they want to find out more information about Veeam and some of the things you talked about? Well, it, it all starts at Veeam.com. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the virtual event platform for Veeamon.com. And then a special thing that we have is also the community hub. So community.veeam.com. Between the two, that's where it's all at. Hey, well, I don't Thanks for uh, taking the time to speak with VM Blog and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, will do. Thank you. All right.